This is Dr. Patrick Hu from Moffitt Cancer Center. We're so happy to have Dr. Dana Ataya here with us today. Uh, Dr. Ataya is an expert radiologist in our division of breast imaging. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me, Dr. Hu. Dr. Ataya, you're an expert with a mammography. So uh, for most women, are mammograms the best way to detect uh, breast cancer early? And when should women start getting mammograms? That's a great question. And so for women at average risk for developing breast cancer, we recommend that they begin screening at age 40 and getting a yearly mammogram beginning at age 40. And that's based on research that has shown us that getting a yearly mammogram beginning at age 40 saves the most lives. And it really allows us to um, detect or allows us a greater chance at detecting a breast cancer when it's small before it's spread to other parts of the body. And this recommendation, so a yearly mammogram beginning at age 40 is a recommendation that is endorsed by multiple societies and groups, including the NCCN, the American College of Radiology, the Society of Breast Imaging, and the American Society of Breast Surgeons. So besides mammography, there are other tests that can be used. I know there's some issues, for example, if there's a high breast, a high breast density, for example, uh, there are other uh, techniques to be used. Can you please describe some of these? Yeah, absolutely. And it's really exciting because um, there are several imaging modalities and techniques that have been developed over the past several years, really, to increase cancer detection, um, particularly for women with dense breast tissue, because we recognize that mammography is limited um, in women with dense breast tissue. And so one of those modalities or techniques is something called abbreviated breast MRI or fast breast MRI. And this is something that we offer here at Moffitt and that's offered at several centers across the nation. And um, it's, for, it's for women who are interested in supplemental screening. So something in addition to just a mammogram and that's particularly useful for women with dense breast tissue. So as a radiologist, if you see something abnormal on the MRI or the uh, mammogram, what's your next step? So if we see something that is abnormal, on a mammogram, for example, and it's a screening mammogram, the first step is to be able to recall the, um, the patient for additional imaging. And that's par particularly in cases where it's a screening study, we need to perform additional diagnostic mammogram views, and sometimes even an ultrasound to be able to characterize something further. If we're not able to characterize something as definitively benign, then oftentimes a biopsy or in some instances a follow-up would be warranted. What's the most commonly encountered myth uh, that you've come across in breast cancer? I'm so glad you asked that question because the most commonly encountered myth is that if I don't have a family history of breast cancer, then I'm not gonna get breast cancer and I don't need to be screened. And that's the most common myth and it is not true. The, the reality and truth is that most women who get diagnosed with breast cancer have no family history of breast cancer. And that is why it is so critical that women, all women, irrespective of their family history, get screened and get a yearly screening mammogram. How has the COVID-19 pandemic affected uh, breast cancer screening? The COVID-19 pandemic has affected breast cancer screening in so many ways. We, we saw delays in breast cancer screening. You know, certainly now we're catching up with that. And I think for, um, for women who still have a question about whether or not they can safely get screened uh, during the pandemic, the answer is yes, absolutely. Please come in for your screening mammogram. Do not delay screening. Um, and what concerns so many of us in the medical community are the projected thousands of cancer-related deaths due to delayed screening and delayed diagnosis. 
Great. All right. Uh, we're so fortunate today to have Dr. Dana Attaya. Dr. Who, thank you for having me.